It's shortly before 8 a.m. in central Amsterdam on Saturday, the 7th of December, 2002. It's cold, just two degrees, and it's a miserable day. There's hardly anyone about. In the museum quarter, a van pulls up, and two men unload a ladder and pack some tools into a bag. They leave the vehicle, looking for all the world like two regular workmen on a cold winter's day. They came here to this spot. They climbed over this gate and set their ladder against that wall. They then put on ski masks and proceeded to climb one of Amsterdam's most recognizable cultural landmarks, the Van Gogh Museum. Heading to the other side of the building and hidden from the gaze of anyone down here by a small wall, they use a pair of sledgehammers to smash a hole in one of the gallery's reinforced security windows, setting off the first of a series of alarms. Inside, the men quickly scan the walls and snatch two paintings close to the hole through which they'd entered, a seascape and a picture of a church, both from Van Gogh's early period. That triggers two more alarms, and meanwhile, the CCTV has picked them up. A female security guard contacts the police, but until they arrive, she's helpless because museum regulations don't allow her to confront the thieves. Finally, the robbers bundled the paintings, still in their frames, into their tool bag and make their escape, coming down a rope that they'd attached at the start of the heist to a flagpole at the front of the building. One of them came down so hard that he smashed the seascape on the ground. Then, as the police finally arrive, looking for them at the back of the building, they resume their disguise as ordinary workmen and make their way with the paintings into the city. The whole operation lasted just three minutes and 40 seconds. So who on earth would steal not one but two paintings by the world's most famous artist? Who might they hope to sell them to, these untradeable goods? What could be their motive? What might they hope for? Well, that's what I'm here to find out. Zovem se Andrew Graham Dixon. O zanimanju sam povjesničar umjetnosti. Obično nemam posla sa svijetom organiziranog kriminala. No, ovaj put otkrivam pravu istinu koja se krije iza šokantnog zločina s početka 21. stoljeća. Krađe Van Gogh-ovi slika koje su za njega imale posebnu sentimentalnu vrijednost. Istraga će me odvesti u bajoslovno bogat svijet međunarodne trgovine umjetninama. Ali i u neka od najsiromašnijih područja Europe. Upoznaću neke iznimne ljude. I zakoračiti na mračnu stranu gdje okorjeli zločinci iskorištavaju ukradene slike za vlastite i zopačene ciljeve. Policajci i istražitelji utrkuju se s vremenom pokušavajući spasiti remeg dijela prije nego što nepovratno nestanu u kriminalnom podzemlju koje poseže za radovima najslavnijeg i najpopularnijeg slikara na svijetu. Čini se da danas svatko želi dijeliti čuvan Goga. Amsterdamski muzej koji nosi njegovo ime svake godine posjeti dva milijuna ljudi. Njegova su dijela u svim svojim oblicima iznimno popularna u široj javnosti. Usto su i magnet za bogate kolekcionare.
So this is painted in 1889. It's a time when Van Gogh was at the asylum in Saint-Rémy. This forms part of the Impressionist and Modern Art evening sale. Uh, we are offering 32 lots at a rough low estimate of around £140 million. This is certainly one of the, the top pieces in that sale. It's very rare to find a, a picture of this quality up on the market. Uh, Van Gogh oils are pretty rare anyway. I think this is a painting that has huge universal appeal. So we've got a very long list of clients who are looking at it from all over the world. So we moved to the Vincent Van Gogh. The Reaper painted in Saint-Rémy in 1889. I start this at £9 million, £9 million, £10 million, at £11 million already, £12 million, at £12 million. £13 million is bid, £14 I have, £15 million, £16 million, £17 in a new place, thank you sir. Welcome into the bidding, £18 million is bid. Many bids in many places, but the gentleman here has it at 19 at £19 million for the Van Gogh. 20. £20,500,000. 21 million. 21.5 is the American bidder just behind you. For the Saint Remy Van Gogh at 21 million 500,000 pounds. Are we all out? Sold to you at 21 million five. Well done. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. When paintings sell for sums like that, it's hardly a surprise that the art market should have become such a wasp's nest of artful dodgers, dealers with hopeful attributions, forgers, fakers. But the number one dodge is theft. And of all artists whose work have been stolen, Vincent van Gogh ranks pretty much at the top. Od kad su nacisti 1937. konfiscirali Van Gogh-ove slike u Njemačkoj, više od 40 njegovih remek dijela ukradeno je u najmanje 15 odvojnih krađe iz galerija diljem svijeta. Mnoge su slike poslije pronađene, ali ne sve. Godine 2002. u Amsterdamu odmah su krenuli u potragu za slikama ukradenim iz muzeja Van Gogh, prije nego što zauvijek nestanu. Istraga je povjerena jednom od najboljih policijskih inspektora, Bobu Šarhanu. What was your instinct about the kind of people who'd done this? Professional workers, in and out, three minutes, very professional. And gone by the wind. Ali lopovi su napravili veliku pogrešku. Inside the smashed window was a head. And downstairs by the rope we had a cap. Like a baseball cap. Yeah, like a baseball cap. Yeah, and then in the side the heads were DNA. Analiza DNK dovela ih je do osumnjičenika koji je već bio u evidenciji osuđenih prijestupnika. Oktav Okidara bio je dobro poznat profesionalni lopov. And he was known as a very good burglar, so uh, we know that he was, uh, he was specialized in burglaries, in big burglars. And we followed him, and we want to see what his uh, behaviors were, and uh, uh, earned he a lot of money, was he spending a lot of money or whatever. Pobjegao je u Španjolsku. Ali u prosincu 2003. uhitili su ga i izručili Nizozemskoj. So when you arrested him, was he cooperative? Was he silent? Was he no? But he didn't say anything about the Van Gogh. Was denying, and uh, he didn't say anything. Not me. No. Not me. Not me. You have arrested somebody, but where are the paintings? I'm not sure there's much that the Van Gogh Museum could have done about it. He smashed the window, and the fact is there was a three-minute window. That was the flaw in the system. If you could do what he could do, if you could climb like Oki, get in, get out, 
make your escape. His mistake was to leave his hat, because inside his hat was hair, and in his hair was his DNA. And pretty soon enough, they knew who it was who'd done the deed. The problem was, they didn't know where the paintings were. Tražeći slike, istražitelji su pratili trag novca. Jesu li osunjičenici odjednom počeli na veliko trošiti? Te, ako jesu, odakle im novac? Evo što kaže tužilac Willem Najkirk. We at wiretaps where they were talking about a lot of money that they were getting. They never wanted to say where they got the money from. So the fact that part of your evidence actually has them talking about money, that suggests that they must already have sold the paintings by, by 2004. Yes, we have indications that they sold the paintings quite fast. There is a wiretap uh, dated in March 2003 uh, when they are talking about an amount of 50,000 euros and that was only half of what they were expecting. Also, the police found out that they were buying watches, cars, they made trips to New York, to Disneyland uh, in Paris. Amsterdam nije samo glasovito umjetničko središte. Ondje djeluje i opasno zločinačko podzemlje. Saznao sam da je početkom 2003. Oki Daram pokušao prodati ukradene Van Goghove slike o zloglašenom kriminalcu po imenu Kor Van Hout. On je svojedobno bio upleten u otmicu bogatog vlasnika pivovare Heineken. Oki i Kor navodno su pregovarali o cijeni za ukradene slike, ali onda je Kor iznenada ubijen u sukobu bandi. Oki i njegov pomagač našli su se pred velikim problemom. Trebaju naći novog kupca. There is one tantalizing piece of evidence from a police wiretap made before Oki D was arrested in which he describes the moment when he sold the paintings. He received the money apparently in a notorious club in the center of old Amsterdam and he received it from a mysterious man called Pinocchio. Then the trail went cold. They couldn't find anybody with an alias Pinocchio. Oki u Daramu sudili su u svibnju 2004. DNK i dokazi pribavljeni prisluškivanjem bili su dovoljni za zatvorsku kaznu. Dobio je četiri pol godine zatvora i morao je muzeju Van Gogh platiti 350 tisuća eura odštete. Ali i dalje nije govorio što se dogodilo sa slikama. Netko se dobro pobrinuo da nastavi šutjeti o tome. I was struck by something that the judge said at the end. He said something about what the crime was. A crime against well, against uh, cultural c- cultural heritage, Dutch cultural heritage. These are very important works of art, and it really struck me that they were stolen just for ordinary money and and buying watches, going to New York, uh, buying a car. Um, uh, these guys um, didn't know whatsoever what they were doing. In Holland, it's it's as if Dutch art really is part of the the soul. Of the nation. I hope it is, um, uh, at least for a lot of people. I don't think for the two burglars they were, uh, that were convicted in this case, uh, I don't think they are art lovers, uh, but mostly uh, the Dutch, they do love uh, art, yes. So why do we care so much about Van Gogh? Why does his work continue to move so many people from so many different backgrounds, so many different parts of the world? I think it's it's partly because he traced the movements of his own troubled soul in art with such brilliance, such delicacy, such responsiveness that you can't help but be 
affected by it here. Vincent is having a good day. This is one of those days when nature seems touched by God's blessing. He looks at the tree in blossom. It's a flame like a candelabra. All is well. There'll be other far darker paintings. And I think that's also one of the things that moves us about him. The fact that we know his life ended in tragedy. We know his life ended in darkness, and yet we can feel his struggle against that darkness throughout. So it's two things. It's, it's genius and it's tragedy. And one forgets very easily that his career, from when he decided to be a painter to the moment he died, is astonishingly short, less than 10 years. His maturity, his, his brilliant years, maybe just four. And I think it's that simplicity, tragedy, and beauty of this life that has moved people ever since he was discovered after his death. I ukradene slike pripovijedaju svoju priču. Svako od njih ima posebno značenje u životu i dijelu Van Gogha. The thieves could never have known it, but when they stole this small, slightly dark seascape, they were actually stealing a really important little piece of Vincent van Gogh's career as an artist. Because he painted this picture in the second half of August 1882. Up until that point, he'd only really worked in watercolor and in pencil. But his brother Theo had encouraged him to paint in oils. And on this occasion, he followed the advice. He bought some tubes of oil paint, a new invention that allowed artists to come out into the landscape. And he came here, of all places, Shaveningham Beach, in the middle of a gale. And he started painting this scene. Imagine added to it a boat and a few figures struggling with the sea. Van Gogh struggled with his canvas. The wind blew so hard that every time he applied paint, it became encrusted with sand. He had to scrape it off and start again. Finally, he finished. The result in the end was this small but potent image. And as he said to his brother, I can't believe I never discovered oil painting before. There's a kind of infinity in oil painting. I can't put it into words. I feel that painting is in my marrow. It's in my very bones. From that moment on, Van Gogh knew that he was destined to be a painter. I druga ukradena slika imala je osobito veliku vrijednost za Van Gogha i njegovu obitelj. Vijest o krađi posebno je pogodila jednog čovjeka. Well, Vincent himself, he had no children, but his brother Theo, who was the most important uh, person in Vincent's life, his brother Theo is my great-grandfather. And I'm very proud to represent, uh, well, Vincent and Theo's heritage. I'm trying to imagine how on earth it must have felt for you when this terrible news comes in, in 2002, that, that these criminals have entered the museum and taken these two paintings. We didn't understand why they uh, took these paintings, so it felt as a great loss. The Noonan Church painting, that's even more uh, personal, I would imagine, to a family member, because I believe Vincent actually created it for his mother. He created it for his mother uh, early 1884, and uh, Vincent's uh, father passed away, and he was a minister in the Reformed uh, Church. And the church is itself the church in which Vincent's father, the pastor, used to preach, is that Used right? to preach, yeah. So it really So is it's a... one of the most personal uh, paintings for, for the Van Gogh family. I suppose often when, when things of this kind are stolen, 
the hope is that they will come to light quite quickly. But sometimes when it doesn't work out like that, there's the fear, you know, that maybe this is going to be a long process, maybe, maybe we'll never find them. What, what were your feelings? I felt quite pessimistic, and uh, I uh, thought of these paintings very often, and I thought most possibly I'll never see them again. Kako uopće vratiti ukradene slike? Godine 2005. u gradu Hornu na sjeveru zemlje ukradena su 24 nizozemska remek dijela. Izrezali su ih iz okvira. Deset godina nije im bilo traga. No neke od njih iznenada su se pojavile 2016. Taj slučaj daje nam uvidu mutni svijet međunarodne trgovine ukradenim umjetninama. There are no art criminals who earn their money by stealing art. They're just plain criminals, but they don't care about what they are stealing because if you see how these paintings were treated, they were treated so badly. We got them back in very 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 bad condition. But they didn't care. The paintings are just some uh, goods to trade. They are a, a currency in the criminal circuit. So um, uh, the thief who stole our paintings, he probably got rid of them in two, two weeks or so. They changed hands a lot of times and eventually they turned up in Ukraine of all places. Krađa iz muzeja Westfries prijavljene svim specializiranim policijskim odredima. No nije jasno kako su slike dospjele u Ukrajinu. Ta epizoda neugodno nam dočarava globalni domet organiziranog kriminala. Nakon što su nekoliko puta preprodane, slike su završile kod ukrajinskih trgovaca oružjem, obavještajaca i viših državnih službenika. Čovjek najzaslužniji za to što su napokon pronađene neovisni istražitelj Artur Brandt. The art world and the criminal world are far more incorporated than most people think. So, let me into your world a little bit. Who do you have to deal with? Where do you begin to look when something well known or even obscure goes missing? This world is very small, the criminal underworld, and they talk like old ladies on at a tea club they they gossip the whole day so eventually you get a lead stolen art goes from hand to hand very quickly it's used as a as a as a bang note in the criminal underworld so they use it for trading arms drugs what what's the value in in the underworld the standard is 10% it means if you steal a painting worth 10 million you can use it as an as a bang note in the underworld for a million 10% of the value on the open market. Upotreba ulja na platnu kao valute na crnom tržištu ugrožava samu slikarsku umjetnost. You must understand these criminals are not art experts. We are here in a room with perfect air conditioning, perfect uh, conditions for these paintings. These guys have no idea. They store it somewhere in a humid place and what you see is after a couple of years some of these paintings fall apart. So you cannot wait 20 years because it gets worse and worse. Pictures come alive in a different way each time you look at them afresh. But if I've learned one lesson on this journey, it's that criminals don't see paintings like that. They see them as objects, objects of exchange, collateral in drug deals, tokens perhaps in deals to be made with the cops or the courts but going back to Amsterdam by 2005 Oki the thief he's been convicted but he's not saying anything where could the paintings be Holland somewhere unexpected like the Ukraine the fact is Nobody knew how were the pictures going to be recovered. 
We never stopped looking for the paintings and during the years our intelligence service, sometimes they got some information about the, well, where the paintings might be. Did you ever, in a dark moment, think maybe the paintings have been destroyed? Of course. On the other hand, um, we always kept hope. Uh, so that's why we always looked into every information we got about the whereabouts of these paintings. In the absence of new information, the investigation here in Amsterdam stalled. But then, suddenly, there was a new lead a thousand miles away. Jedna prijašnja krađa Van Gogha u Rimu. Na posljedku će dovesti do prvih konkretnih informacija o slikama ukradenima u Amsterdamu. Pronalazak ove ukradene slike navest će ih na pravi put. This is Van Gogh's The Gardener of 1889. A far cry from the paintings stolen from Amsterdam. This is a picture that dates towards the end of his life. The colors are much brighter. But there's a darkness here too. 1889 was the year in which Van Gogh was confined to a lunatic asylum. Not long before creating this work of art, he was found in his studio in the asylum, having drunk kerosene from his lamp, having eaten his own paint, apparently in the first attempt at suicide. So why would he paint a gardener at this terrible time? I think he had in mind a story from the Bible, Christ appearing to Mary Magdalene as a gardener after his resurrection. I also think that it's important to remember Van Gogh had been a deeply Christian man, had been a preacher in his youth, tended to think in biblical terms. Is he looking for some hope of finding Christ again, finding some kind of salvation for himself? We can never say for sure, but we can say that this is a deeply poignant image, a deeply vulnerable painting. And here in Rome at the end of the 20th century, it would once again prove to be vulnerable, but in a rather different way. Masked gunmen have stolen three priceless works of art from a museum in Rome. The thieves tied up three security guards before getting away with two paintings by Van Gogh and one by Cezanne. U elitnom odredu karabinjera koji istražuje krađe umjetnina, slučaj je preuzeo jedan od najiskusnijih inspektora, pukovnik Ferdinando Muzela. Perché lì capì che necessariamente c'era stato una talpa all'interno del museo che aveva aperto le porte ai banditi. E da lì poi si sviluppa e arriveremo a individuare tutto il gruppo ma avevamo un grosso problema, e cioè non conoscevamo il nascondiglio dei quadri. Ecco che all'alba del 6 di luglio noi organizziamo un'irruzione in due appartamenti romani, troviamo il giardiniere e il gabannon del Jordan. Iskustvo rada na slučaju ukradenog vrtlara bilo je presudno kad je ušao u trag slikama iz Amsterdama. Navodno je 2007. saznao neke vrlo korisne informacije. Pitao sam ga smije li govoriti o tome. Non posso parlare, non sono autorizzato a parlare di ogni sette. Abbiamo già detto con lei. Questo non è un soggetto che dobbiamo... Non possiamo parlare di questa cosa. No, perché non sono autorizzato a parlare dell'operazione del 2007. Come ho spiegato, nel 2007 c'è stata okay. un'attività del tutela patrimonio culturale 
che di, ha riguardato i quadri. Capisco, allora, non, non parliamo di questa cosa. It's a shame he didn't want to talk about the 2007 operation because I've heard a lot about that, a lot of rumors, great stories of policemen dressed up as Neapolitan pimps with blondes on their arm posing as interested purchasers of the pictures. But I guess the one thing we do know about that operation is that it didn't work because after 2007, the paintings still remained unrecovered. Muzelina istraga jasno je pokazala da je kupac slika ukradenih u Amsterdamu gotovo sigurno talijan. To bi objasnilo i nadimak Pinokio. U među vremenu Van Goghove su slike i dalje nestajale iz svjetskih galerija. Godine 2008. u Švicarskoj je ukradena ova slika. Dvije godine poslije lopovi su ukrali jedno ranije dijelo iz muzeja u Egiptu. U Amsterdamu šest godina nije bilo pouzdanih tragova u slučaju dviju ukradenih slika. Ali 2016. dogodio se preokret i to zahvaljujući tihoj ali ustrajnoj istrazi u talijanskom gradu poznatom po velikoj ljepoti ali i nasilju. come to Naples, well, of course, for the coffee, for the opera, for the great masterpieces in the museums and churches, and just for the ramshackle beauty of the old city. There's another darker side of Naples. Under normal circumstances, I steer clear of it, but these aren't normal circumstances. Organizirani kriminal odavno je problem u Napulju. Među onima koji se bore protiv toga državna je tužiteljica Stefanija Castaldi. Dall'ottobre del 2004 una delle faude più cruente che ci sono state a Napoli. Più di 120 morti. Di questi 120 morti moltissimi innocenti. Perché la causa di, di questi morti? Allora, la causa di questi morti era um, una guerra tra le guerre di Camorra. Who or what are the Camorra? Well, they're one of the oldest and largest criminal organizations in Italy, made up of a number of often ferociously competing factions. Unlike The Mafia, which is based in Sicily, the Camorra has its roots in Naples, although its tentacles have reached across the world. The soldiers poured into Naples. Mussolini je uvelike suzbio djelovanje Camorre, ali ona opet jača u drugom svjetskom ratu kada Amerikanci sklapaju tajne ugovore s bosovima kako bi svrgnuli italijanskog diktatora. 
Today, the Comoros' main activities include drug trafficking, the illegal dumping of toxic waste, money laundering, extortion, prostitution, murder, and the occasional dealings in stolen art. And just a matter of months after the Van Goghs were pinched, a brutal war broke out in Naples between different factions of the Camorra for control of the drug trade. Taj rat za teritorij velikim se dijelom vodio u Skampiji, naselju na sjeveru Napulja, izgrađenom 60-ih godina. Mjesni novinar godinama piše o ovom području i Kamori. So why did the Kamora have such a stronghold in Scampia? What's special about Scampia to make it a, a hotbed for drugs? Every mafia is stronger in uh, in area with many uh, poor families. Uh, unemployed people must try to get money. And Camorra uses the desperation of people to make power. So it feeds like every mafia, it feeds on poverty yes. and it feeds on despair. This is the mafia story. So instead of becoming a baker or a pharmacist, you, you become a drug dealer because it's the only, it's the only uh, way to go up. It was just like a, a war. All for this control of drug business? Yes. Do we know how much money is at stake here? For the group of the Camorra that wins control of Scampia, how much can they hope to make in uh, one year? We say that drugs money, when they buy a big carico di... Consignment. They take all the money in a big... Um, uh, sacco. In a bag. A lopisimo. And they weigh it. Yes. They, they don't they count yes, the money. Yeah, they yes. weigh the money. Yes. Scampia, it's a tough place. You can feel it's a tough place. The truth is that decisions made here in the 1960s that led to the creation of these honeycomb-like buildings created perfect conditions for those wasps, the Camorra, to flourish. That led to a horrendous drugs war in which many, many people lost their lives, at the end of which someone ended up with an awful lot of blood money. But who was that person? U uredu tužitelja Stefania Castaldi sve se više približavala glavnim kamorinim bosovima. A onda je došla do važnog otkrića koje će istražitelji prvi put usmiriti prema Van Goghovim slikama ukradenima u Amsterdamu. Ho arrestato 104 persone e in quell'occasione ci sono stati dei, dei, degli affiliati condannati che hanno deciso di collaborare con la giustizia. Il primo che decide, si siede davanti a me e a lui io faccio la domanda, chi vi riforniva di droga? E lui mi dice, dottoressa, è un uomo che vive in Olanda, ad Amsterdam. Poi noi gli mostriamo delle foto e lui riconosce Raffaele Imperiale. A quel punto io capisco che Imperiale era uno dei maggiori narcotrafficanti al mondo. Ali, tko è... Raffaele Imperiale e kako è povezan su kradenim slikama. This is the picturesque town of Castellamare overlooking the Bay of Naples, 
a far cry, you might think, from Scampia, but the influence of the Camorra reaches even here. Ne vozim se baš svaki dan policijskim automobilom, ali danas mi pukovnik Giovanni Salerno pokazuje kraj iz kojeg potječe Imperiale. La Fiera Imperiale è, è nato qui a Castellammare di Stabia nel 74. Ha trascorso la gioventù qui a Castellammare. Il padre di, di Raffaele è un, è un, un imprenditore eh, molto importante qui della zona eh, che eh, nel tempo ha realizzato diversi investimenti immobiliari eh, qui proprio in, in città. Allora non è un uomo da una famiglia molto povera? No, assolutamente, è una famiglia agiata, eh, benestante, eh, probabilmente avrebbe avuto tutta la, la possibilità di poter eh, lavorare in maniera dignitosa qui a Castellammare. Quindi lui, un ragazzo a quel punto di 20-25 anni, probabilmente eh, vuole conoscere il mondo, vuole avere nuove avventure e si trasferisce ad Amsterdam e lì apre un uh, negozio, uh, un bar, un coffee shop. Iz amsterdamskog coffee shopa, gdje je legalno prodavao marihuanu, imperiale će prijeći na krijumčarenje velikih količina droge za Camorro. È un personaggio grande nel, nel narcotraffico qui a Napoli. Sì, eh, chiaramente lui in quegli anni eh, assume un, una dimensione eccezionale. Tutto la cocaina che arriva a Napoli, a Scampia, è fornito da imperiali. Prema vlastitim riječima, Imperiale godišnje zarađivao između 15 i 20 milijuna eura od prodaje droge. Ali još nije bilo traga Van Goghovim slikama koje su prije više od 10 godina ukradene i prodane Pinokiju. The breakthrough came in September 2016 and it came from a pretty unusual source, the suspect himself. Raffaele Imperiale, eh, Cerrone, che è il suo eh, principale socio in questa organizzazione, eh, hanno ammesso eh, di avere la disponibilità eh, di eh, due Van Gogh. E sono loro che hanno, ci hanno detto dell'esistenza di questi quadri e che erano in possesso di Imperiale da, da poco dopo del loro furto ad Amsterdam. Mario Cerone osuđen je na 14 godina zatvora. Sudili su i Imperialeu, ali on neće tako skoro u zatvor. Preselio se u Dubaj. Kako Ujedinjeni Arabski Emirati nemaju s Italijom potpisan ugovor o izručenju, bio je izvan dosega talijanskih vlasti. Raffaele Imperiale spilled all the beans to the Italian prosecutors in an extraordinary written confession. Here it is, dated the 29th of August, 2016. Io, sottoscritto Raffaele Imperiale, I, the undersigned Raffaele Imperiale, born in Castellamare di Stabia, declare the following. Now he goes into great detail about how he got into the drug business in Amsterdam in the 1990s. And he goes into surprising detail about just how much money he was making. Migliaia di chili di cocaina, he says. Thousands of kilos of cocaine were being sold. And what did he do with that money? Well, as far as we're concerned, the interesting part comes at the very end of this lengthy document in Annex 1, part of... Imperiale's listing of his personal possessions, which he's prepared to surrender to the state. Due quadri di Vincent van Gogh. Two paintings by Vincent van Gogh, di valore inestimabile, of priceless worth, which I purchased in 2002 using the resources of the organization for five million euros. 
Now we know the real identity of Pinocchio, Raffaele Imperiale. This is the only known photograph of him, rather blurry, taken surreptitiously on the Isle of Man, where I imagine he was laundering some drug money, putting some funds offshore. But why would he have said that he paid five million euros for the paintings when the Dutch were sure that only a hundred thousand euros had changed hands. It's certainly very Pinocchio. <whistles> Why exaggerate? Why would he have wanted the paintings in the first place? And why did he confess? Odgovor se krije u italijanskom pravnom sustavu, koji potiče svjedoke da surađuju s vlastima. Imperiale znao da se vrijedna ukradena roba poput Van Goghovi slika može zamijeniti za blažu kaznu. Nel codice di procedura penale è previsto che se gli imputati forniscono nel corso delle indagini o nel corso del processo delle informazioni che non erano note, si possa considerare e attenuare la pena. Quanti anni ha ricevuto? Lui ha avuto 18 anni di reclusione. E quindi era una garanzia per la sua vita e perché sperava, come in parte è stato, perché ci è riuscito in parte, di poter poi consegnare, eh, se mai fosse stato arrestato o eh, ah, fosse bellissimo. stato colpito allora, da un'indagine. Allora nella sua testa, sì. questi due Van Gogh, se lui, se lui ha 20 anni, forse con questi due quadri, oh, sono 10 anni. Però non gli, è, non gli è andata così bene. Well, it's quite something to meet someone who was at the epicenter of the Camorra drug wars in the early 2000s. Goodness knows how many people she's put away. Goodness knows what she's seen. But I think what she really nailed was the question of motive. You know, the question that's been bugging me throughout this investigation. <laughs> If you like, why do these bad guys, why do they want paintings by the great artists like Van Gogh? They know perfectly well that they can never sell them. Well, as Stefania explained, it's written into the Italian legal code that if you, if you give up some of your ill-gotten gains, if you return them, you get a much lower sentence. And if you've got something as valuable, not just to Italy, but to the world, as a pair of paintings by Van Gogh, they are if you like, the crook's ultimate bargaining chips when it comes to the final reckoning. How many years is he going to get behind bars? Ali, i nakon svega toga, nije se znalo gdje su slike. Lui non aveva detto esattamente dove. Lui non aveva indicato esattamente. Abbiamo pensato che uno degli obiettivi possibili fosse proprio l'abitazione del del papà. Premda Imperiale Ovotac nije sudjelovao u sinovim zločinačkim aktivnostima, niti je bio sumnjičen, pretražili su njegov posjed. Dispone di una, di una grande villa, di una dependanza, e proprio all'interno di questa dependanza i, i due Van Gogh sono stati ritrovati nel corso di una perquisizione, eh, celati in un doppio fondo eh, nella, nella cucina di questa eh, dependanza. Nella cucina? Nella cucina c'era un, un doppio fondo eh, che è stato ovviamente individuato e avvolti in uh, strofinacci da cucina. Nakon gotovo 14 godina, međunarodna istraga krađe dviju neprocjenjivih Van Goghovi slika završila je u jednoj italijanskoj kuhinji. Potraga je napokon bila gotova.
ukradene Van Goghove slike opet su predstavljene svijetu na Puljskom muzeju u Capo di Monte. These just symbolize the story of a miracle, really. Because it's a real coup that these works have been found again. And um, it's also a matter of, of course, local and national pride here in Italy. That, and, you know, it's a coup against also the organized crime. So in that sense, um, it is a celebration on many levels. There's now this added dimension of the crime and good versus evil. And now the good has won. It has always been an open wound in a way. Uh, for all these years, and even though those works may not be, you know, on the face of it, really famous works by Vincent van Gogh, they're really important both art historically and also in terms of the family history and the personal history of the artist. So in that sense, you know, they really left a gap when they disappeared, and we're very happy that we can fill that gap again. Šest mjeseci poslije slike su napokon vraćene kući u Amsterdamski muzej Van Gogh. Prije nego što ih vrate u stalni postav treba ih restaurirati. First thing that was clearly visible when they came back was that in the left corner a piece is missing yeah, of the uh, yeah. original support and uh, and the paint layers. It's a piece uh, approximately two by seven centimeters. Quite a fragile thing then. Yeah. But all in all, I would say, given its status mm -hmm. as possibly the very earliest oil painting by Vincent van Gogh. It's actually in really good nick. Yeah, it is quite, yeah. Yeah, we're happy that it's, uh, that no more severe damage has been done to the painting. Yeah. yeah. Now, in his letters, he says it's so difficult because the wind is blowing, there's this yeah. terrible storm. Yeah. And he actually refers to the fact that the painting gets covered in sand. Have you found any evidence of that, looking, looking at the picture, you know, under the microscope or in X-ray? Yeah, yeah, we have. Yeah, uh, it's difficult to see with the naked eye, but uh, with the microscope, they are clearly visible. Yeah, especially in the sea parts, you can see you can see them everywhere. Actually, what a thing! But it's extraordinary that this painting, which was stolen, should have gone on this huge sort of circular journey and have come all the way back now here. Mm -hmm. And I think at the time when it was stolen, some people tried to be cheerful by saying, oh, well, at least it's not one of Van Gogh's great paintings. Mm -hmm. But when I look at it now with you, it, it, it seems to me that, well, that was wrong. It, it, it might not be one of his masterpieces, but it's a very, very important painting. It's a very important piece of his mm -hmm. wonderful, tragic, beautiful life. Yes. Because it's really the first time that we see him taking this material, oil paint, that he would do such magical things with <laughs> and, and becoming excited by it yeah. and using it. So it's it's fantastically important picture. It's a, it's it a wonderful thing that it's come back. Yeah, it is. It's the beginning of something. It's, it's wonderfully exciting. So, Willem, here it is. Here it is. How amazing. Wow, incredible. And you can imagine how extremely happy we were and really, really touched and uh, that this painting 
came back home, back in its own home, Van Gogh Museum. Wonderful. <laughs> I feel very lucky, actually, to be here with you, looking at the painting. Initially, he made uh, this and uh, dedicated this painting to his mother. His father passed away one year later, and he wanted to make a tribute to his father, and he added all those figures, darkly painted, as if they are attending a funeral, and symbolically, the funeral of his father, of course. Goodness. Yeah. Beautiful painting. It is a beautiful really, painting. Yeah. At its heart, this has been a story for me about the sacred and the profane. Think of Vincent van Gogh with his sacred sense of mission to be a painter, striving, struggling to create these visions of a blessed world. And then think of the murky underworld inhabited by characters like Raffaele Imperiali, a man prepared to use his drug money to buy on the black market. Paintings buy. Van Gogh. I don't think we should be surprised by the links between the criminal world and the world of great art. Because criminals aren't stupid. They know, they understand the great value that we set on works of art by the great painters. They understand that if they own one or two of those things, when the time comes for their last judgment, they can use them, they can give them back in order to get a few years off. The very nature of the transaction in which the masterpiece is the criminal's bargaining chip means that in almost every case we will get the paintings back. But it isn't a straightforward process and you do always need a little stroke of luck. So if you hadn't been looking that deeply into the organisation, yes. you would never have got him yes. and you would never have yes. known about these Van Gogh. Yes. Si svolta un angolo a volte e si arriva a qualcosa di inaspettato. Per questo bisogna crederci sempre, non mollare mai. Quindi tutti i paesi d'Europa, del mondo, devono capire che un museo oggi diventa attenzione anche del crimine organizzato. Quindi dobbiamo avere amore, attenzione, attenzione sì. per questo patrimonio sì, sì, sì. che è il patrimonio che ci unisce, perché poi il bello unisce tutti.